He's only 17 years old, but Connor Zilich may be Chevrolet's next NASCAR star, and Austin Hill is red hot to start this season, but doesn't seem to be winning over many fans. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. <clears throat> Excuse me. Typically, on Sundays and Mondays, I focus on the NASCAR Cup Series. It's the biggest event of the weekend, biggest crowds, biggest ratings. It's the highest level of stock car racing in the world. But today, I want to tackle a couple of topics from Saturday's Truck Xfinity doubleheader at Coda. Let's start with trucks. Corey Heim. This guy. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. First truck series win of the season, congratulations to him. Last season was Corey Heim's first full-time year in trucks. He probably should have won the championship until the number 42 happened. But his average finish last year was 6.8. That's insane. What's more insane is that through the first five races this season, he's on pace to shatter that number. Five races into this season, his average finish is three. Third. That's unbelievable. He's only 21 years old. This young Georgia racer seems destined to be Toyota's next NASCAR star. But I've raved about Corey Heim plenty in the past. That's not who I want to talk about today. Today I want to talk about Chevrolet's young NASCAR phenom who made his NASCAR National Series debut on Saturday. 17-year-old Connor Zilich was actually a guest on the Door Bumper Clear podcast this week. He also did a, a great interview with fellow YouTuber Dave Land a week ago. I'll link that down in the description below. It's short, sweet. I encourage you to go check it out. I know we love to judge these young, talented drivers really early, but to me, Connor Zilich comes off as extremely comfortable and very confident. I didn't realize until recently that it was Kevin Harvick who kind of discovered this kid when he was racing in Europe and encouraged him to pursue a career in NASCAR, helped him land some of his earliest opportunities. Again, this kid is only 17 years old, but you listen to him talk in these interviews, you watch him perform on any racetrack in any car, he looks and sounds like someone who has always had this plan. Like he's known for years that He's just going to make it. He talks like someone who expects to win NASCAR Cup Series races in the near future. He doesn't say anything like that explicitly, but it's just the vibe. Again, he sounds so relaxed, yet confident at the same time. It helps that he has some security thanks to Trackhouse. He signed a multi-year development deal with Trackhouse this past offseason. It's allowing him to focus on developing his race craft. He's driving a wide variety of vehicles this year. I like what I'm seeing. I've liked what I've seen from him really the past year. I mean, go back to his ARCA debut at Watkins Glen last summer. He led the most laps, was leading with a broken car until the final corner of the final lap when his buddy Jesse Love snuck past him, a fellow Chevy prospect. Zilich impressed once again this weekend at Coda. First career truck series start, and in qualifying, he set multiple truck series Coda track records. Unbelievable. Now, the race was ugly. He blew turn one on lap one, the initial start, cut a tire down. But he passed dozens of cars for position throughout the day, came back from a shortcutting the corner penalty, spun out, got spun out, I should say. You know, made some contact with Ty Majeski, late hurt his tires once again, made some mistakes for sure, but the raw speed and ability once again was on full display. We already know Connor Zilich is a good road course racer, but I'm confident he's going to learn ovals very quickly. Just look at who he's surrounding himself with. I already mentioned Kevin Harvick, future NASCAR Hall of Famer. Justin Marks of Trackhouse. Josh Wise, he mentioned at Chevrolet. He's got teammates like Shane Van Gisberg and Ross Chastain. He's going to race for Dale Jr. and Junior Motorsports a few times later this year. So much racing experience he can lean on, and he's already clearly very professional, especially for a 17-year-old. Again, he talks like someone who expects to contend for NASCAR Cup Series championships one day. He talks like this was always the plan, and now he's just executing it as he should. No second thoughts, no hesitation. He's already had tremendous success racing Trans Am cars. He's a Rolex 24 winner. Underdog stories are great. You know, Ross Chastain, Watermelon Farmer, Chase Briscoe sleeping on couches trying to get opportunities, so on and so on. But it's also fun to watch great talented racers develop their craft from a very young age. It's too early to say for sure, but a lot of folks in the industry are tossing Connor Zilich's name around as potentially NASCAR's next phenom. He's not an underdog. He's got all the hype, 
with Chevrolet. He's got a ton of resources. I think it's going to be really fun to watch him continue to develop over the next few years. He told David Land that Trackhouse's goal is for him to become the youngest NASCAR Cup Series champion ever. My number one goal is I want to become the youngest Cup Series champion. Okay. Ever since I started working with Josh Wise, that's been his, you know, goal and Justin Marks as well. They all have agreed that, you know, this, this is a feasible goal. And again, shout out to David, go check out that full interview. I'm going to link it right there down in the description below. Let's move on from trucks. Let's move on from Connor Zilich. I don't want us to get too far ahead of ourselves. He is just 17 years old. I want to talk about a 29 year old Chevy prospect in the NASCAR Xfinity series. I don't know when this happened exactly. Maybe Martinsville last fall was sort of the, the turning point. But NASCAR fans largely seem to have turned on Austin Hill, who is off to a red-hot start to begin this year's Xfinity Series season. Fans were quick to criticize him after Circuit of the Americas this weekend. Let's take a look at the final overtime restart. Shane Van Gisbergen, the control car in the inside lane, Austin Hill behind him, gives SVG a good shot heading into turn one, bump and run, Austin Hill to the lead. Then, on the final lap, SVG tried to pay him back, hit him hard, they both both got up out of the groove. Kyle Larson on fresher tires scooted on by to win the race. Both Austin Hill and Shane Van Gisbergen were dejected afterwards. Hill specifically was upset with the 97 for hitting him so hard on the final lap did not feel that was justified. He told Fox after the race. You know, the restart, I thought it was somewhat clean. I mean, it seemed like the 97 lifted super early. I don't, I'm not real sure why he lifted so early. And then he started wheel hopping. Once I got in the back of him into one and then uh, ultimately just, you know, got ran over it, knocked his nose in. So it kind of shows how hard he ran into me. But I think most fans saw Shane Van Gisbergen's move as justified payback. Hill bumped SVG on the restart to take the lead, so SVG made sure to put the bumper to the back of Hill on the final lap. Austin Hill, though, you heard in that clip, didn't see things the same way. He called the restart somewhat clean. Uh, he did say that he thought maybe the 97 slightly missed a shift because he got right to his bumper around the start-finish line. So I'm not going to pile on Austin Hill here, but I think those comments were not uh, received well by most fans watching at home. For what it's worth, reporter Dustin Albino, who was on the ground, tweeted this photo shortly thereafter of the two drivers talking it out. Albino says they seem to be all good with each each other after their discussion. A lot of fans piling on Austin Hill after this race. I get Austin Hill's frustration. His bump on SVG on the restart wasn't egregious, not by NASCAR standards. Guys bump and run each other all the time, and SVG came out in second right behind him. It's not like Hill sent him off into the grass. But that being said, the unwritten rule is that if you bump someone out of the way for a position, you should expect them to give it right back, perhaps even a tiny bit harder. Especially in this case, when it was clear Shane Van Gisbergen was the faster car, the faster driver, you know, without those couple of overtime restarts, Austin Hill wouldn't have even been on the same straightaway as Shane Van Gisbergen. SVG and AJ Allmendinger had driven off. It was going to be a one-two colleague finish. The overtime restarts derailed that. SVG was faster than Hill. You knew, or at least Hill should have known, retaliation was coming. Did SVG hit Austin Hill a little hard? Yeah, he did, but who did that hurt most? I would argue SVG. The front of his car was destroyed. Hills looked you know, okay, but they both lost the race to Kyle Larson, so naturally both were upset. Again, I understand Austin Hill's frustration. I don't think all the fan blowback is necessarily justified, but it's nice to see a bad guy in the Xfinity series. A bad guy who's actually good. Austin Hill leads the Xfinity series points right now. He won the first two super speedway races of the season and has finished top five in every single race since. Ridiculous numbers to begin the season. You may not like how he handled Martinsville last year, and I agree with you. I think the way Austin Hill and really all of RCR handled Martinsville was unsportsmanlike to say the least. I don't love the way Hill reacted to this incident. Somewhat clean restart in what universe? But I'm not going to necessarily pile on the guy. He was frustrated. He finished third, act, act technically second because SVG got penalized. Drivers hate finishing second. In the moment, get out of the car. They're going to be frustrated. I'm not going to pile on Austin Hill. I just think it's nice to see a bad guy, more or less, who's actually talented, who's contending for wins every single week.
That's fun to watch. That's fun to talk about. As I always say on this show, I'm interested in interesting storylines and drivers. Love him or hate him, Austin Hill right now is very, very interesting. And at 29 years old, kind of one of the veterans of the Xfinity series in a good car, he is not going anywhere. Expect Austin Hill to be very much one of the championship favorites as we get later and later into the season. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Did you cringe at all when you heard Austin Hill's post-Coda comments? Do you think Shane Van Gisbergen was justified trying to bump him out of the way there on the final lap? And what is the ceiling for Connor Zilich? Could he truly be one of NASCAR's next stars? Or are folks hyping him up just a bit too early? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I think he's legit, but he is still lacking oval experience. I think he's got some ways to go. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. While you're down there, leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new and you love all things NASCAR. We talk racing every single day here on Out of the Groove. And as always, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Have a wonderful rest of your day, folks. I will see you again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.